welcome to Eugenic. Uh, today here we have a 2013 Mercedes ML350. This has the very popular engine, the 642 3.0 liter engine. This engine is found in so many Mercedes uh, diesels, uh, including the ML350, GL350. It's found on the GLK 350s. It's found on the um, Sprinters. It's found in so many other uh, models. Uh, it's one of the most popular engines that Mercedes has, uh, diesel engines that Mercedes has made and they kept this engine for over 10 years. Uh, so anyway, we're going to take a live data. A lot of people are looking at different live data. So we're going to uh, take a look at that, especially for the DPF, DPF filter. And um, we're going to look at that, add blue sensors and so on. So we're going to read the VIN really quick. Got to plug this OBD2 adapter under the dashboard and we're going to do automatic read this is going to select the model now if it doesn't select the model which most cases should but if it doesn't then you can manually go under the different mercedes models and we are going to take a look here there's a couple of modules that control units that you need to look at for live data especially that they have to do with uh, dpf filter add blue and so on um, so we're gonna look at one we're gonna look at engine control unit in this case we're gonna go to live data and you can see uh, test values for idling fuel system engine output exhaust system let's take a quick look at these I don't wanna there's a lot of live data being shown here so I don't wanna be taken but you can see here uh, coolant temperature engine speed fuel temperature rail pressure um, regulator valve and here you have a range reference range and you have the actual readings here they are changing the engine is running right now uh, while driving I'm not actually now driving but you could do this you could select all these values and what you could do is you can record them and then go for a test drive and come back and play this later or have somebody else um, you know drive while you're looking at these values uh, but you can see here rail pressure you can monitor that uh, boost pressure so you can see that right there exhaust back pressure um, so this can help um, if you have a really high value here for exhaust back pressure then you know that your DPF filter is probably has got too high of a salt content it's restricting this clog so you can see the max value is 29 psi we're at 16 so that's that's good um, value right there so that's a good thing um, fuel system high pressure control again rail pressure let's go back uh, zero quality calibration for all sensors you can see those values so if you ever put um, for example if you put a new fuel injector you're gonna have to code that and if you don't then you're gonna have issues and you're gonna see really high values here uh, let's go back here what else we got engine output high pressure boost pressure control let's take a quick look at these again some of these values are going to repeat you can see exhaust back pressure there again but this is a, a diesel particular filter differential pressure sensor b28 slash 8 this sensor does go bad quite a bit uh, you can see that value right there and what it should be between 0 and 2.6 uh, so that's important boost um, charge air temperature let's take a look at these again we do have some repetitive values but you have a lot of new ones like torque related uh, data and kick down uh, switch as well for some reason it's not a kick down position it's it did, it did take a second then to recognize it but it does recognize that and then you can see that change there um, let's go back let's keep going here so we got exhaust system exhaust gas uh, and coolant temperature mass airflow sensor intake air pressure, boost pressure again right there there's another actual values press ok here salt content so this is something very important 
you can see ash content of uh, this particular filter. Um, uh, you can see that a lot of these are reaching that um, uh, 0 0.03. Actually, it's 0 0.003. So actually, we're good there. Uh, for a second, I thought they were reaching that max uh, value, but uh, that's one it's one tenth of that. So that's uh, that's good. You can see here this different value exhaust back pressure again B28 slash 8 B19 slash 9 temperature sensor B1911 temperature sensor upstream of the turbo uh, and then you can see last time the uh, DPF region uh, ran 100 uh, that was a while ago or it's actually it says 121,000 miles let's see that is total distance at last successful regeneration. This value seems uh, pretty high. Um, so um, check that to basically should be the last time that the DPF regen ran, but 121,000 miles does seem pretty high. I mean, I would think it probably has run a few times since then, so I would. Ideally, you want to see a lower value there. System components, drive authorization. This is has to do if your car doesn't start and so on. So that's something else. Um, alternator, electric fan, and so on. I'm not going to look at those. Uh, individual actual value groups. Uh, again, back pressure there, intake air pressure, ash content of. Uh, DPF filter that's good outside temperature battery voltage should be 14.6 that is an error there that we need to fix assume say 145 volts uh, one decimal off there so that's something we gotta um, correct there but uh, you can see these other values Boost pressure again, boost pressure positioner, charge air temperature. There's quite a bit of data on this screen right here. Let's skip through these real quick. All right. All right, so let's go back because there's a few more a couple more control units where I would look if you are troubleshooting um, DPF issues, AdBlue issues, there's a couple more places. The other one is selective catalyst reduction. So you can go in there, live data, uh, fill level of blue AdBlue, you can see that. Uh, full AdBlue temperature, you can see those values right there. Uh, temperature values. Probably. Outside temperature, those are just that's a little low exhaust temperature upstream of SCR catalytic converter seems to be lower than the recommended range. But at blue metering, and the other thing to keep in mind you could graph any of those, you can graph up to four different graphs, two there, but here we can graph up to four different values, and you can record them as well. Uh, test values while driving select all you can just look at only two or three or as many as you want but I just like to select all there and then um, you can see this um, pressure in AdBlue supply circuit is a little higher than what it should be uh, voltage showing correctly there 14.56 volt you can see it up here at the top left as well the battery voltage for 14.7 this exhaust temperature upstream of SCR catalytic converter that doesn't seem it's that sensor could be defective because if you look at the values here they jump 220 and then it jumps to 31 which is it's not possible to go through 300 degrees Fahrenheit to 220 so there's something going on there and then also it's not within range so exhaust temperature upstream of SCR uh, upstream of the DPF filter that might have an issue there. Total at blue consumption, you can see that there. Let's go back. 
and then select all here and it's thing a few more vehicle speed add blue metering SCR set of factor of long-term adaptation exhaust after treatment system um, that value right there should be around close to one so that's good so those are two very important control units you want to look at live data under and compare those values with the um, recommended range or see if there's something out of spec now of course you can always read the codes but a lot of times the codes you know might just not give you enough information especially if you're troubleshooting an intermittent issue so i would recommend going to engine control unit first you would i would probably start with the full scan going through the whole control units if you've done that you can narrow it down to these two here there might be that there's an add blue control unit as well usually on these so it might be under one of these other um, modules or subcategories. Um, let me see if there's any control units uh, that we need to take a look at. Uh, the only other control unit that I would say, in at least in this vehicle, the way that this is configured would be the fuel pump, especially if you have any issues where you're driving and you lose power was driving and then the vehicle goes in limp mode or has really um, low RPMs like the RPMs go up very slowly I would say probably look at fuel pump uh, that is uh, another one because sometimes you might think you have issues with a um, DPF filter but in fact you might have fuel issues uh, so you would go to live data and then you have all this live data in here and then um, so this is uh, important fuel pump you can see the consumption of the fuel pump right there fuel pressure uh, should be between 45 and 159 we're a little bit low there but uh, it it is okay we're on the low end there I'd like to see higher pressure but um, fuel pump is on you can see if we turn this off status of circuit 15 is off you can see fuel pressure is actually not holding very well it's dropping uh, it, it, it will as soon as you put the key in the ignition, turn that back on. You can see pressure goes to 65. Circuit 15 is on. So you can go ahead and start it. Okay, so that's something to look at as well, especially if you're troubleshooting those uh, diesels that just don't have enough power, lose power. But again, uh, I would strongly recommend running quick scan then it will go through every control unit of the car and it'll tell you which ones have full codes and then, then you can save the report you email it or whatever you want to do with it you can print it if you like but you can save it on the scanner or uh, you can print the report button and it gives you a summary of all the codes of course you can just enter any of these control units where you see codes but for the most part here we do have a few codes up on top here uh, you just give this a couple of minutes and that that's going to scan, scan the whole car It helps sometimes because you can like connect the dots of what's going on. You might have a full code uh, Let's say you have a issue with the DPF filter, but um, Or you might even have an issue with a control unit that's not responding You're gonna see another control unit that says I ca I cannot connect with the add blue um, module for example and then when you this card doesn't have a dedicated add blue control unit, but if it did, for example, you'd go click on it and uh, you'll get no communication. So that's one way to figure out that maybe you have a module that it's not getting power, it's not powering up, has internal fault or something like that. So as you can see here, we do have a few full codes. I'm going to let this finish really quick. And that's right there. It's almost done. As you can see, there's all, over 47 control units on this car. You can see a few control units have full codes. ESP or stability control has taken under voltage. It's an old full code, so we can just clear it. Instrument cluster. It says ESP has a mod function, you can see that, but it's probably because at some point this car had a weak dead battery. Uh, electric parking brake in assembly position. Uh, these cars don't like low voltages, a lot of control units just shut down. So when you see this, where you have store codes, they can be old, they can be from five years ago. What you need to focus on is this uh, output for the mirror heater has malfunction. That's a current code. You have to address that if it matters to you. 
but we have all these store codes so I'm gonna hit report and then here you can see all the codes in one screen which can help the battery of tire pressure sensor has malfunction one of the TPMS sensors one of the wheels is defective as you can see um, red front tire um, and controller for telematics registration on server telematics has failed uh, we don't really care about that or Cyrus radio as well let's go back what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit um, here you can save email this report do whatever you like save print email hit erase it's going to go through all these control units and it's going to clear all those codes that were stored now those that were current they're not going to clear without fixing them but you can see most of these codes are going to clear they're old they were either due to no communication with the module because at some point there was low voltage on this car but as you can see here all we have left is just one full code check that out um, and so what you can do is you can then start the car, drive it. If there is something critical, it's going to come back again. I do want to show you one other thing before uh, I end this video. And is to pull live data uh, another way. Uh, so we're under diagnostics where we select the make, the model, and we're looking at all that. But if you select OBD2, you can also look at live data here. And this is the, uh, the protocol that's usually used. Um, on all cars so this scanner like even if it doesn't let's say there's a car that it doesn't support if the car has OBD2 you can select OBD2 and at least read the engine trouble codes okay and you can see EGRA uh, start closed a couple of permanent full codes there okay and go to live data and you have a lot of live data here that have to do with his engine so it's gonna scan through really quick and I'll show you. Now, this is a pretty long list, but again, it can be very helpful when you're doing troubleshooting on these cars. I just select all data and you can see over here, I'm gonna scroll a little bit fast through this because it is very long. Um, so you can see the sensors, time is injured and start. how long the car has been driven with the mat uh, with the check engine light on zero because the check engine light on it's not on right now but if it was then you know how long you've been driving like that uh, so on the Lambada voltage bank one sensor one it's reading zero and again like you could come here and graph these values if you wanted to if you wanted to monitor um, control module voltage barometric pressure um, let's see engine oil temperature fuel injection timing engine fuel rate let's go mass airflow sensor a EGR do circle and percentage uh, relative th throttle position there you can see that changes uh, fuel rail pressure a is the high um, fuel pressure rail fuel pressure rail a so because you have the low pressure and this is where you can see the high pressure this is high pressure um, direct injection so if you're troubleshooting something like that again like if you're troubleshooting a car where and you can see uh, so if you like troubleshooting a car it's like as no power or losing power stuff like that and you don't have any DPF fault codes you don't have any um, anything there then fuel pressure is probably going to be the next thing I would look at boost pressure there total engine runtime and I didn't really dive into the how to uh, turn off and on and off but with the scanner you can you do active tests you can do things like where you go and turn off uh, let's say the fuel injectors you can turn them off one by one so you can figure out you know if there's one that's defective we didn't dive into that we can do that in another video but that's how to troubleshoot dpf issues and look at live data from the various sensors that are found on this car hopefully you found this video helpful thanks for watching mechanic where you can be the mechanic